We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, life, and resurrection, through whom we are saved and delivered. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, grant we pray that we who have known his mystery on earth may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Numbers. With their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole. And if any who have been bitten look at it, they will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. Our response, do not forget the works of the Lord. Hearken my people to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter mysteries from of old. Do not forget the works of the Lord. While he slew them, they sought him and inquired after God again, remembering that God was their rock and the most high God their redeemer. Do not forget the works of the Lord. But they flattered him with their mouths and lied to him with their tongues, though their hearts were not steadfast toward him, nor were they faithful to his covenant. <coughs> Do not forget the works of the Lord. But he, being merciful, forgave their sin and destroyed them not. Often he turned back his anger and let none of his wrath be roused. Do not forget the works of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, 
God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. 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 We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your cross you have redeemed the world. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, September 14th, is the Feast of the Exaltation or the Triumph of the Cross. Uh, it is uh, a reminder to us that we are the ironic nature that Jesus triumphs or wins. He is victorious by giving up his life. He is victorious by dying, even though in all seems to be lost to his disciples. In the, the disciples scatter, the disciples are discouraged. Two of the disciples in the Gospel of Luke are walking seven miles to a town called Emmaus because they are discouraged and don't believe in the, re they don't really know about the resurrection yet and Jesus appears to him, them on the road to Emmaus. So it's a reminder to us that, that there is triumph and victory even in this apparent losing situation. And, there's, and the reason there's triumph and victory is because Jesus is the Son of God. He's not just any defendant in a trial. It is true, we could say that when Jesus is put on trial that he is wrongly accused and that we should root for him because he's the underdog being wrongly accused. And who would not sympathize with somebody who's being wrongly accused? But in some ways, Jesus is not wrongly accused. Jesus willingly accepts all of our sinfulness, all of our faults upon him. So in that way, you could say he's rightly accused. He's, he's willing to suffer even for things he didn't do. So, but, and he can do that as the Son of God in a way that, that we cannot, so he becomes the perfect sacrifice. Thomas Merton wrote this about suffering, that he warns us, cautions us about what he calls the worship of suffering, that we're really not called to um, believe in the power of suffering on its own, but rather to believe in the power of God. Thomas Merton writes that our self-denial is he says absurd or self-denial or suffering is absurd if we practice it for the wrong reasons or if we practice it without any valid reason at all. Sometimes we do practice suffering without any reason, okay, or we do it for the wrong reasons. Maybe we 
I do it to get noticed or to call attention to myself or to feel sorry for myself. Those are the wrong reasons to suffer. Therefore, it is true that we must deny ourselves to come to a true knowledge of God. We, we must also have some knowledge of God and our relationship with him to deny ourselves intelligently. In order to be intelligent, our denial must first of all be humble. It must also be supernatural. It must be ordered not merely to our own moral perfection or to the good of the society we live in, but to God. In other words, I'm not in control of the outcome of my suffering, and I may not choose what I get to suffer. But isn't that true? I'm, I'm sure that you experience this. You have cho- there are moments that you have experienced suffering, experienced difficulty, and you did not choose those moments. You didn't choose what you were going to suffer, or how, or for how long. So we suffer believing in God. We suffer believing in the triumph of the cross, that Jesus has conquered suffering and conquered death for us. Let us pray for all missionaries who preach the Catholic faith throughout the world, we pray. For Christians and those in Christians in countries where they are persecuted or places where they are persecuted for their faith, we pray. For all those who suffer from illness and from terminal illness, we pray. For the eternal rest of Maureen Gannon, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those we keep in our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, which on the altar of the cross canceled the offense of the whole world, cleanse us, we pray, of all of our sins, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you placed the salvation of the human race on the wood of the cross, so that where death arose, life might again spring forth, and the evil one who conquered on a tree might likewise on a tree be conquered. Through Christ our Lord, through whom the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. 
Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, profess your resurrection until you come again. There, therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Lourdes, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech you, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring those you have redeemed by the wood of your life-giving cross to the glory of the resurrection who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended.